What are some of the professions that are slowly dying? Printing press repair. One of my friends travels the country repairing presses and is one of only a handful in the industry. Up until a couple years ago I was a cobbler. It was my favorite job I ever had. When I left they shut it down. They also sell shoes and boots there, because it takes quite a long time to teach someone the skills. We have a franchise cobblers in the UK called Timpsons. They've managed to stay popular by becoming good at offering a range of niche specialty services. In addition to repairing your shoes and boots, they offer locksmithing and key cutting, personalized engraving and license plates for cars among a few other things. Really knowledgeable in their trades and decent prices too. Photo lab technician. I've worked in a few different photo labs and with a move to digital there really isn't a need for people who work with film. I used to develop film at a 1 hour photo. The reason they are pretty much gone is when not enough film is run through the machine they start to grow crystals on the rollers. Which scratches the film. We got rid of our machine shortly after it scratched a roll of wedding pictures. Was too much work to keep reliable. Sewing machine technicians. The two older gents that service mine are amazing been doing it most of their lives. They're lovely people and extraordinarily knowledgeable but they're wanting to retire and there's no one to take on their business. They've tried to find apprentices but no one is interested despite them being in pretty high demand. The precision engineering in my industrial and domestic machines is extraordinary and it makes me so sad that if they go wrong I might never find anyone to fix them. Scientific glass blowing. I work in a lab that uses tons of custom glass parts for our sampling flasks and analysis racks, and anything that breaks needs to be repaired quickly and precisely. Young people go into glass blowing to make bongs and sculptures and chandeliers but never the technical stuff. All the scientific glass blowers in my area are 70 plus with health issues and they can't find apprentices. Crazy thing is that you can charge $15k for a cannabis film still and it's only about $2k in raw glass parts, so there's a huge untapped market out there. And shipping glass long distance is obviously risky so we need these guys localized and knowledgeable. God I hope not, the pharmaceutical industry is underpinned by those very precise flasks. Artisans of various type. I'm Italian and my country is full of artisans and artists that can't just survive with the income of their products selling. The only few that are surviving are guided by young entrepreneurs that use internet and social media to export abroad. In this way we're losing a lot of traditional workers and works and here in Italy it's actually a problem. Just a few weeks ago I was chatting with two guys doing a glass blowing demonstration. They said the craft was rapidly dying out until marijuana started being decriminalized around the world. But they make vases and lamp globes and candy dishes during fair season then go home and make bongs to sell for hundreds of bucks. Engineering drafting. I've seen my job change from drawing with pencils to becoming a full time 3D modeling career. It's not a bad thing since the job has changed and no has lost work but it's sad in the context that drafting is art and the old school drafting before computers is absolutely beautiful. I loved drafting in high school as it was the perfect blend of art and engineering. I ultimately decided for digital media art and website skills because job market. Journalist. That's not a sarcastic, edgy comment. They are legitimately being replaced by content creators. The advertisements don't even read journalists or reporters 60% of the time. The distinction is important too, because the job of a journalist is to report the truth, whereas a content creator simply matches a brief suited to the publication's biases, alignments and interests. It's why people lament the loss of investigative journalists. The last big such story I can recall is John Carriarell's exposure of Elizabeth Holmes. I also think it's because newspapers have changed. The Daily Mail is an example of the ghastly content creators. Something as basic as spelling and fact checks does not seem to be a requirement. Every single person profession who got replaced by an answering machine if you were stupid enough to call here and waste your time and energy, please press 1 inches. God I hate these. Call volumes are heavier than usual. Our menu options have changed. Please listen to the following 12 options. Your call is important to us. Please remain on the line after your call. For a brief satisfaction survey. Shoe shiners, cobblers, tailors. The knife sharpener guy that used to drive around neighborhoods sharpening housewives knives. Dot-a-door encyclopedia salesman or vacuum cleaner salesman.
It's strange, people need sharp knives. More places should offer it. Everybody that regularly uses kitchen knives should get their knives sharpened once a year or whatever. Volkswagen air cooled mechanics. In my small city, there were three shops specializing in them only a few years ago. Now there is only one but not for much longer. He's retiring today. Yes, it's me. Finally free. Hey congrats. I'm jealous. Land surveyors. In my state, USA, there were stats put out a few years ago that there were about 2,600 licensed surveyors in the state and about 40% of those were above the age of 60. It's an incredibly important field, but no one talks about it as a career when you're in high school. Depending on which sector you get into, you can make the same amount as civil engineers would but with way more job security. Sounds like you're talking specifically about an RPLS. There are plenty of surveyors, but with modern technology you don't need that many RPLSs in your company. But you can have literally hundreds of surveyors working and get by with just a few RPLSs to sign off. Parking lot attendants and toll booth operators. Went to a doctor's office with paid parking the other day and was shocked that the only way out was via an attendant. Feel like it's become one of several options with machines as the more common option. When I was looking for jobs I saw an ad for a lot attendant. 60 hours a week minimum plus working every other Saturday for a whole 11 bucks an hour. Yeesh. I used to be a hotel concierge. My knowledge of who to see and what to do in our city was replaced with the likes of Google reviews and TripAdvisor. I remember a guest wanting to go somewhere to eat. I suggested an authentic place, which they turned down as Yelp rated it 3 stars. They opted to go to a 5 star one. I had never heard of it, then came back to complain the restaurant was a 30 pound taxi each way, as it wasn't in the city and the restaurant was actually a takeaway, but Yelp knows better. I love a good concierge, especially in a country where I have a minimal grasp of the language. Yelp is garbage, you'll get better results just talking to random people on the street. Internal medicine and it's really problematic for people with abroad diseases that affect multiple parts of your body. Doctors are increasingly specialized and it's nearly impossible to find a good internist who isn't beyond swamped. As a medical student, I think the main issue stems from the fact that the ridiculous cost of tuition for medical schools make physicians feel like they have to specialize in order to make enough money to live comfortably and pay off loans. I'm already 100k in debt as a second year. We are wildly short of truck drivers. The media is talking about it now, a little, but I learned the job a little over two years ago and in training we were shown a map of the US where we had more freight to move than drivers who could move it. The entire map was solid red, not a speck of white on it. The driver shortage predates covered. Best I can figure is people. A. Don't want to be gone all the time. B. Don't know you can drive locally and be home daily while still making good money. C. Share in the negative stigma that exists around truckers these days. D. Some combination of the above. But there is a growing shortage, and with drivers aging out and younger people not replacing them, the problem is set to get much worse. Everything you own a ride on a truck, but what happens when no one is driving the trucks? My dad used to be a truck driver, and a big part of it he says was the move to making drivers owner operators. Now, pretty much every issue and expenses on the driver, company shirks all responsibility. This is in addition to possibly being sent long distance and all the other shenanigans that go into it. Most repairing professions are in trouble, especially repairmen for retail use machines. We are becoming an ever wasteful society with deliberate departure from right to repair. Commercial kitchen repair is one that'll never die out, as well as commercial HVAC. People will always need food and cool air heat. Believe it or not, carpet installers. Sure people still put carpet in, but a lot less. With the rise in popularity of things like LVT, and trends changing, people are remodeling or building new with less and less carpet. In a typical residential setting, you're lucky if the bedrooms have carpet. This means there is less work available overall, and what there is available is only small rooms. The installers are needed less and they make less. This has been going on for a few years, and it's getting harder to get guys to come in and install the stuff. I feel like the quality of carpets has gone down significantly. The carpet in my parents house, that was put in the early 1980s, 
is so much better than anything I've looked at to replace it. I'd rather not have the poor quality stuff available now. Maybe I have to go to some sort of speciality place, but the material isn't what it used to be. I've been doing DoorDash part time. Doesn't seem sustainable. I think the delivery apps won't last more than 5 years. The drivers get screwed, the customers get screwed, restaurants get screwed. People commit fraud. I think it will be a ghost kitchens and regular sit down soon. Yeah I quit my garbage minimum wage part time job to do DoorDash since it's about 2x the money I would be making an hour. But this past month has been awful. Hoping the winter is going to deter the influx of drivers since people are scared of the snow. Traditional art. I just got into it, looking forward to improve. But now, it seems there's more digital than traditional. I wish to make comics and posters with handwriting, sketching, but in digital. This can be done without time constraints. As a red letter media fan, sadly I've witnessed time kill off one of the most honorable professions in the world. VCR repairman. Comma VCR repairman. Yet the sales of VCR head cleaner is booming. Airline desk attendants who help you reschedule your missed flight. Some airlines now have mobile apps that let you book your own flight and even divert to a different airport. They'll show you which ones are available and your choice will immediately go into their computer system. And chances are if you have a basic knowledge of which airports are where and their transportation options, you'll do a better job than them. As someone who has flown a lot, I just simply can never see this job disappearing. People love to complain and panic when their flight gets cancelled. The car mechanic motor trade. The profession is more like it's moving to another profession tbh rather than dying. Mechanics used to be 100% mechanical, now it's 60% mechanical with 40% being electronics. I predict in the next 30 years this will shift to 80% electrical and only 20% mechanical as they are even removing engines from cars now and replacing them with batteries. The weather service. When I joined weather service in 1970 there were around 600 meteorologists and hundreds of technicians who did various jobs. The satellite imagery and radar were infrequently available and nothing like the resolution that we see nowadays. The weather charts were all plotted by hand as the data came in over teletype and then the meteorologists analyzed the charts again by hand. We only forecast for today and tomorrow, nothing any further out because to be fair we were basically extrapolating. There were a large number of weather offices at that time each covering a relatively small area. The first computerization was pretty well that instead of typing the forecast out on a manual typewriter and having the teletype operators retype it and send it, we were typing on dumb terminals. We were then transmitting the forecast as well so the teletype operators pretty well got lost at that point. Over the several decades that I worked for the weather service more and more things became automated. The weather charts themselves were plotted on what looks like very fancy plotters. So the technicians who manually plotted the charts went at that point. In the late 1980s the entire radar network was massively upgraded. I was part of that process and I assume it's still going on although I've been retired but clearly there are more radars and they're much higher resolution. At first numerical modeling started out to be pretty unreliable but it did allow us to forecast out further and further in time. Of course the modeling became more and more detailed and useful as time went on and by the time I left the embedded I was printing out the first draft of the weather forecast. I am retired now and have been for some time but I'm guessing that a lot of the weather forecasts are just reviewed by the weather forecasters. It seems to me highly likely that there will be very few humans actually doing the daily forecast. At the moment I think they're mostly responsible for watches and warnings although I couldn't swear to that. By the time I retired there was only about 180 active. Desk working. Meteorologists left and I assume the number is even lower now as I know that a number of weather offices in the country have shut down. Even while I was working several offices closed down with the forecasting being done out of the larger more central offices. Bookbinder. I originally wanted to take a bookbinder apprenticeship, but the only job in my entire state was 100 miles away. I would have spent a full 2 hours on public transportation, driving there and then working for 8 hours only to drive 2 hours back. I would have even done it because I do bookbinding as a hobby and I love that craft. 
but there is hardly any demand for bookbinders anymore. That's a shame, and it's the way of things, but I do bookbinding as a hobby on the side. It's a lot of fun to sit down for hours at a book, making book blocks and designing covers. As an artist, I could definitely make a little money, since there are some people, especially in the esoteric field, who prefer self-bound and specially made books, and such special books with leather covers. Steel fittings and embossed patterns have a lot of personality, but these are then also books where one sits two weeks on it around these then for $200 to sell and one at material costs already $100 has. Bookbinder and book restorers. I work at a university library and we still have 2-3 of them, but as soon as everything is digitalized they won't be needed anymore, just very occasionally to preserve old books. Pub landlord in the UK. Sure there will be the odd pub in prime location that does well and they won't disappear entirely, but the days of the quiet local village pub or quiet area are virtually over, and this is pre-pandemic. It seems to me like dang near every one that requires some kind of manual labor. I own a business and dang near every time I've hired someone to do something at my business whether it be electrical, plumbing, or HVAC. I end up having to do the job myself because no because nobody can do what they charge you to do anymore. Yup, I work for a residential HVAC company and we get about one good employee a year. The rest come in expecting to be techs overnight and wash out. Machinists. More advanced CNC machinery is being created and becoming more cost effective each day. Can make hundreds of parts in the time it takes someone to make one. CNC machinists are still machinists. We're just programmers machinists. I can run two or three machines myself now. High quality fitted furniture seems to be dying. The amount of effort needed to do it properly isn't financially rewarding. The industry itself isn't going to die, but the quality level is going to drop because you can't teach decades of experience to new people. And that experience isn't really possible to acquire as tools have rendered acquiring that experience less likely. Butchers. Walk into any butcher shop and the owner will likely be a 50 plus year old man who's been doing it for 30 years. My guess is many of the ones that stick around are the ones who are able to be passed down to the next generation to be managed. Otherwise, there seems to be a dying interest in getting into the profession among young people. Not to mention more and more people shifting to vegetarianism and veganism etc. Two professions immediately spring to mind. One professional reader for a clipping service. Before the internet, you could get a job sitting at a desk, reading hundreds of magazines and newspapers looking for specific terms, names, or stories. You would be paid to clip, before word processors you would literally cut and paste, any article or advertisement that mentioned whatever you were looking for. My job requires a lot of research and personal archives, and I can tell you that every prominent person in the 20th century saved a lot of correspondence with a clipping company they were paying to hunt down any mention of their name. Kind of an analog way to google yourself. Clipping companies still exist, but the readers obviously do not, as the internet is a much more efficient way to seek out how certain names and ideas are being used. 2. Related to my job, tenured humanities professors. Depending on your political position this could be a good thing, but it's no secret that the pinch that state budgets have put on public universities has meant an absolute throttling of the hiring practices in humanities departments. Personally I believe this happened in part because humanities professors did a poor job advocating for themselves when they needed to be clearly articulating the value of their programs. In other words the moment of crisis came and none of them noticed. Now it's clear we're past the point of no return. In a decade or two major humanities departments might only be found in the Ivy League and at similar exclusive private schools. My grandmother was a professional reader for Reader's Digest for decades. She had filing cabinets full of her own personal clippings. Seems like the car dealer is on a pretty steady decline. I've noticed what seems to be the eradication push since I entered the business in 2017. So many sites like Vroom and Carvana for example making a huge push to not even have to go to the dealership. I don't think the salesman will become extinct, but I see numbers being cut. Carvana's been sued a few times and had their license to sell cut in a few states due to not being able to produce a title to some of the cars they sell. Steve Leto, a lawyer, 
did a video about all of it a week or so ago. With as bad as they've screwed up I think once the pandemic finally comes to a close, I think you'll see an uptick in sales again. Semi irrelevant but I just don't understand how these trades are dying out. I'm in my early 20s and know countless people that would take up a trade if it paid more than 20 an hour. It just seems the competition for HVAC and similar jobs are overcrowded so those apprenticeships aren't as easy to get as they were. But then I see this thread of dozens of niche trades with high demand. How are people in my group not able to connect with the niche trades? We all scour Indeed and other job sites but the only apprenticeships listed are chock full of applicants and the pay is usually below 20 an hour. My granddad was an upholsterer. He died 9 years ago and told me 3 years before he died I wouldn't have enough time to learn the trade. There is one other upholsterer in a roughly 50 mile radius and when my granddad was alive there were 5. Furniture isn't built to last anymore and car interior and roof repair is getting more and more outdated. I would have loved to learn how to upholster but was too late to the game. As a side note, I live in rural Scotland, my granddad would have been 80 this year. His dad was a plowman when he was young, who had two Clydesdale horses. The family lived 15 miles from the nearest town and had nothing but a single bicycle as transport. Truck driver. Nobody really wants to be a truck driver, and no schools are telling kids that it could be a viable profession. In fact, truck drivers have a pretty negative stigma I would say, in the states at least. This one is huge, too, because once we run out of truck drivers, most domestic freight travel completely halts. Translators. More and more companies are just relying on machine translations, or hiring bilingual staff. So the need for dedicated translators is becoming an artifact. I don't think it will become an obsolete occupation in my lifetime. But work will become harder and harder to come by. Cobbler. Hard to find someone interested in making or repairing quality boots sometimes. Not much call for it in our disposable economy. Heck. So many boots are just made from genuine leather that they're not worth repairing anyway. I have a pair of red wings that I absolutely love. But they need some TLC from a proper cobbler. Realtors. They think a lifetime of lobbying for ridiculous laws to make them relevant will protect them now. Their day of reckoning is coming. The industry is ripe for disruption. This and car dealerships. I don't need a dealership to buy a car. I've done my research. I know what I want. Let's cut out the middleman needless markups and let me buy directly from the manufacturer. Middle management. Now people are working from home there's no need for someone to time the bathroom breaks of lesser employees. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.